Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper. Remember the uh, QCX from QRP Labs? It's a single band transceiver that comes as a kit. I built one in part one. Go have a look if you haven't seen it. I uh, chose the 80 meter band because 80 meters is a very important band for prepping using something called NVIS, Near Vertical Incidence Skywave. You're sending your signal straight up and it rains back down into a probably thousand mile radius. So it's a regional coverage band. It's like a regional telephone. In this video, I'm going to operate the radio and make some contacts. So make sure you watch until the very end. But first I need to put the radio inside a case and I found the perfect case on eBay. It was suggested in uh, the uh, QRP Labs forums and it's the perfect size for the kit. There will be a little bit of drilling, but uh, I'll try to make that part very short. Here's the case. The uh, two halves are practically identical. I'll have to file the rails here that are not going to be used to uh, leave space for the spacers. After that, it's all going to be a matter of cutting out a window for the screen, holes for the buttons, and of course, the side plates. I just realized that I could fit battery packs under the circuit board, which is probably what I'm going to do. I just have to get one more. Not quite as nice and flush as I would have liked, but the bottom of the case is done. Probably enough space for those batteries later. Well, it seems to fit properly, so uh, let's see. Yeah, pretty nice. Here's a bad fail. The holes are off-center and uh, I have to make them bigger. right here and it's finished uh, it's not as nice as I was hoping because of the, uh, the buttons here it's off-center I have a temporary button here 
uh, this one will be uh, extended, uh, both will be extended and actually I hope to use buttons that will <coughs> cover these holes here. I'll have to use something to poke inside here for the uh, buttons to press and this is for the uh, Morse key that I have to come up with something here uh, to be able to use that. So let's look at the sides. Same thing, uh, not exactly centered. I had to put uh, large holes there so that I could use the jacks. They would be, uh, they would go deep enough. Same thing on the other side. So uh, well, let's plug it in and see if I can make a contact. Yes. That was quick. England. Well, a guy from England, let's see what he says. Thank you, Giro. Very... GA. Five, six... Five, six, eight, huh? Tom. Doublet antenna. Missed the last word he sent.
87? I was making a video. Well, I missed a couple of words here. I'm out of practice, I have to say, but hey, that was a good conversation. Uh, for once, I could, uh, you know, we could exchange a few words, and that's really nice. One contact with Tom in England, so that's pretty good. If it wasn't freezing outside, really, I would have preferred to go out and operate in the field, but I just don't have the right equipment to do that right now. And I know that's not very good prepping, but as soon as the uh, temperature rises up a little bit, I promise you I'll be outside operating. I want to say a word on 80 meters again, because 80 meters, uh, 3.5 to 3.8 or 4 megahertz, is a very important band for prepping. I know that most of you guys and myself before uh, didn't think I would set up an 80 meter antenna, because of course it's 130 some feet long, 40 meters long, so it's not very easy to set up. Also, I thought, but operating portable, you can go in the field and set up a mast, telescopic mast like the spider beam 12 meter, any you know fishing pole that's at least I would say about 35 feet tall, and you can set up an inverted V so your antenna is like this. It's either fed on the end here or uh, here on top of the V with the coax cable or ladder line going down. So that makes it much easier. You can have guy ropes uh, going on one side, two ropes, and your wire is perpendicular to that and, you know, holds the, the mast uh, up. So it's not that difficult, really. Uh, it, and it's really worth it because uh, it, it allows you to uh, cover a regional range, which uh, is very difficult to do with other bands. 
So if you haven't really thought about 80 meters or thought about it and you know thought well it's you know it's too long it's too big of a, an antenna uh, you know you might want to review that because it's it's really a great band for uh, regional contacts have a good one